Baymax! And Dumbo? And Rex? Well, I could tell you now if you don't mind. <laughs> If they can settle and listen. Accurate. Whatever it takes to get your kids to go to bed. Sure, I'll tell you all about the day I almost died cliff jumping with a broken arm. Just go to sleep. Honestly, for us, it's just singing jingle bells at this point. Yes, it's March. Anna's always been snowman obsessed, but this could also be a signal that this was the same perilous night, which is why they never got a chance to press their father about the story any further. Same PJs, Elsa's wearing the same headband, even Naduna's wearing the same dress. Epic. Whoever saved you, I. Love <laughs> Clairvoyance. We're in this river. Notice that she puts Anna to sleep with a very effective forehead to nose tickle while singing the words specifically to Elsa, the one she wanted to hear the words. Character drooling continuity. There's a mother. Also, the lyrics change to mother as we jump to the future. Spoiler song. Enjoying your new permafrost, Olaf? Some lampshading to not have to animate a snow cloud following Olaf around, which, to be fair, I'm sure is something Elsa would have been working on in the last six years. Some things never change. It's a theme in this song that lots of things do change, but a wall going up and Olaf's head falling off is a twofer. Let's do a little catch up on some crazy detailed details. The blemishes in the panes of glass, the scratches and wear in the area of use on the table, the way the leaves glisten and move in the wind, the imperfections in the wooden railing. I genuinely laugh every time at that. Uh, mercy, I guess? The best difference between this medley and the first movies is that there's no separation between the sisters. An ice sextant would be complicated. Uh, Han! Unredeemable monster! Greatest mistake of your life! We didn't even kiss! Villain! Makes sense that in a movie with basically no villain, they'd have a hard time finding the word. It's like, lack of villain shadowing. Mickey? Mouse! Oh, Elsa! <laughs> Owning it. Come in. Love is an open door. I'm so sorry if we did. You know, very few people are actually good at family games. That's just a fact. I have the strangest feeling that Kristen has to say that to Dax like a few times a week. Hugging, love, all the happy sisterly emotions. Oh. <laughs> that little taunt. Into the unknown. Into the unknown is better than let it go. There, I said it. I don't know, maybe it's just how many times I've heard it lately, but what does this song get me? All the feels. The entire song is Elsa's acceptance of her hero's journey and it's all very meta. Acknowledging how crazy the first movie is and how she just wants to stay with her sister and her family. She doesn't need more unknown anything, even if Arendelle might not be the right place for her. First verse is that, no unknown for me. I've had my adventure and don't need something new. Second verse is, Maybe stop this because I'm sort of looking for a reason to go. There's part of me that loves to go. Final verse is freaking let me into the dang unknown. How do I you? It's her call to adventure, refusal of the call, and meeting the mentor all in one song. And as a musical lover, I appreciate that the final push is through the amazing bridge where she harmonizes with, well, her mom and herself. <laughs> Technically, it's still flying, it's just not attached to anything. Tell me what's going on. I woke the magical spirits of the Enchanted Forest. Candor. Please make sure they stay out of the kingdom until we return. <laughs> I get that her point is to protect them, but it absolutely sounds like she wants to keep the serfs from raiding the good silver. Apparently, Elsa missed her calling as an architect and builder since she built a permanent castle on her first try. New to love, like, like I was. When you're new, you're bound to get it wrong. So you're saying I'm wrong for you. <laughs> Man, that's, uh, that's relatable. Yeah, men often suck with the mouth, mouth work noise. Hey, pants! Pants on a princess. Well, queen. Even better. This forest is beautiful. Mm, yeah, what she said. In case we die. You think I we're could... gonna die? No, 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 no. I, we will die at Where's some point. We will die. I always find that death is the best icebreaker to a proposal. <laughs> and his scream echoes in the song. <laughs> Freak out, snorry cam. You have to love that the spirits realize Elsa is the one with the power after she saves Anna, so the wind spits the rest of them out, and she's just so collected the entire time, trying to gain her balance so she can use her powers. Can, uh, is Elsa a badass good girl? I think so. Also, the memory showing up makes sense, since Elsa is pulling water out of the air to create ice from where the events took place. I think I'll name you Gale. Well, if the wind isn't blowing between 32 and 63 miles per hour, you better not. And that's been your Cinema Winds Meteorology Lesson of the Week. Well, at least they have their parents. 
their parents are dead. <laughs> 3PO has nothing on Olaf. You're not worth it! Guess what? I'm the bad guy! What? Appropriate and common reaction. That's it! Lieutenant Matias! Library, second portrait on the left. Yep, that's him. I, I think Aaron Deli and Painters kinda suck. I see him. I see him in your faces. I just wanted on record that if I ever come down with a terrible illness of some kind, I'd really love to have Sterling K. Brown tell me. I don't think I'd mind that much. The way his eyes go from evil to Disney. I know, I know what you're thinking. The fire spirit must be a wife win. Well, guess what? He's actually a a son win, eh, a toddler win. Actually, no, let's just call it what it is. A Jude win. Been looking forward to this. And while Jude likes lots of movies, seeing this little guy turn all docile was the first time he said, I like him. And then every time thereafter, I like him. So that's a win in my book. Julia liked him too, so technically he's both, but officially a Jude win. Yes, this is an objective scale, have no fear. That's a North Aldra scarf. Dipper was always good at identifying things. It wasn't the quickest ever, and a lot of us probably knew already, but I appreciate that they don't dilly-dally and try to keep it as some crazy reveal later. Obviously it's their mom. <laughs> what were we saying about Harmony? And now tying the intro song from the first movie into the North Aldra people who are loosely based on the indigenous Scandinavian people called the Sami. They're reindeer herders that do call themselves the people of the sun and the wind, and they sing a form of song called yoik or Bully. Apologies for pronunciations. Curse you, English sized tongue. Halima still over at Hudson's Hearth? She married? Mm-mm. Oh, wow. Well. Why doesn't that make me feel better? Because that's what actual love is. I know, it's a throwaway line, but love isn't hoping the person you loved was alone and without love just so that you can have a chance with them. It's wishing them all the happiness in the world, even if it's not you that gives it to them. I knew I liked Matthias. But look, there's a fifth spirit. It's a snowflake. It's a snowflake. Cute baby reindeer calf. So, between the darkness and the ground shaking and the Earth Giant's music cue slash sound design, pretty terrifying. You talk for them too? I do. And then you, you just, you just say it. And then you just say it. Camaraderie. It's always good to find out someone is as bonkers as you. Come on, Kristoff. Let down your guard. I love that Kristoff letting down his guard, or his version of letting it go, is a hair metal power ballad a la Whitesnake. Or almost more 70s pop rock like Chicago. <laughs> Reindeer cringe. I never thought it was a question of weather. And let's appreciate that our king is finally getting the renown he deserves. What else does he need to do to remind us of his love? We'll remember we belong to him. We'll be back. For a sign, For a sign, the Look, the Queen homage is killer, even outdoing Queen a bit. But I think it needs to be stated that Jonathan Groff is also singing all five reindeer harmonies as well. How did the ship get through the mist? I thought nobody could but us, unless... Nobody was on it. Leave it to Olaf to always deliver the most devastating news so cavalierly. To Otto Holland. It's real? And their mother's Otto Holland song in the background. In typical Elsa fashion, she uses her magic to send Anna away without realizing the repercussions if Anna does an Anna. And Anna did an Anna. Character continuity all around. Wouldn't be an animated movie video if I didn't point out some reflections, and pretty much throughout the movie you can see Olaf's own nose reflected in his eyes. <laughs> not only is Olaf's reaction perfectly optimistic, he even tries to help. I try not to get caught up in the details. Oh, who am I kidding? This little head shake, a very recognizable hype yourself up moment before doing something insane. These animators honestly blow me away. So like, remember that power ballad from before? Well, now we're gonna give you a totally metal action scene. Also brutal. Even her makeshift rap for one that could probably fit two is a snowflake. I like that each spirit's path to acceptance of Elsa was a little different. Wind needed to be beaten in a fight, fire needed to be cornered, but then it was important that Elsa showed him she wasn't a threat, and then water needed to be tamed like a wild bronco. Glaciers are rivers of ice. And when you think about the amount of water that passes through a glacier, making it the memory river, collecting the entire area's water memories is pretty smart. Okay, another reflection, this time of the glacier in her eyes. And since we have the Jude win for this guy, the wife win is actually the water spirit's mane and tail that are both waterfalls. It's basically all Julia talks about anymore. I have always been a fortress. Of solitude? Show yourself. Ooh, building the angelic voice into the song? You've done this before, haven't you, Elsa? Normal rules did not apply. You don't say, Ice Pillar Creator. All of my life. The 
Yeah, so Adina can have a few, maybe a couple, maybe several more wins for this control and range and purely stunning voice. Show yourself. Come on. You are the one you've been waiting for. I know we all ship Honey Melsa, although I'd be just as happy if Elsa ended up being an ace. But there's something kind of awesome about a princess movie where the female lead's romantic life doesn't come up and doesn't even matter because that's not what her story is about. Even after letting it go, Elsa still clearly feels lost and out of place. She's pulled in by her secret siren because whether she admits it to herself or not, she was still looking for answers. To be told by her own mother and... I guess the spirit version of her magic side that she's the one she's looking for, that she doesn't need anyone else to tell her what her place is? Can we just call this a queen moment? More self-awareness. Hans of the Southern Isles. Come up, Hans. What are you reading, Your Majesty? Oh, some new Danish author. Yeah, his Mer People book is good, but you should really check out Sned Rodden. Sned Runnin' Engine. Sned Runnin' Engine, the Snow Queen. You know it's cold when the Ice Queen can see your breath. Superhero landing. Ha. Huh. It's a river of ice, so if you go too deep and you drown, you actually freeze. I'm starting, I'm starting to get it. I think she may have gone too far. Man, that's a rough one. Losing your best friend, which is actually evidence that you already lost your sister. I love you. But that's always been the point, right? I talked about it in the first one. Olaf has always been the symbol of connection between Elsa and Anna. So there's a lot more going on here than just losing Frosty in the spring. But it's super awesome of Gale to keep all Olaf's memory-filled snow together. Hello, darkness. I'm ready to succumb. I mean, wow, that's dark. But let's just run a quick list. Elsa's dead, Olaf's dead, her parents are officially dead, Kristoff disappeared, and her grandfather was a cowardly trickster murderer. This grief has a gravity. It pulls me down. And Kristen Bell, her voice breaking from the note. Talk about realism. What's the deal? Did someone have a sloth in the recording booth? Take a step. Step again. As my favorite therapist once said, baby steps, Bob, baby steps. And this song solidifies the mental health message in this movie that's so valuable. Grief, loss, depression, a feeling of loss of purpose and hope. Anna is dealing with it all and taking the next step. Sometimes a literal step is all you can do and is all you should do. The next right thing can be talking to someone, it can be medication, it can be prayer, it can be getting out of bed, putting down the phone, a step outside the dark cave. It may only be a piece of a larger message, but it's a really good start. Also, if you can, be Lara Croft. That helps too. That everything will never be the same again. Yeah, here's a few more for Veronica. And this time the sound design makes your skin crawl. But also anyone else reminded of the Mondashawans? And like, obviously Anna is never in any real danger, but man do they sell the scary speed and power of the Earth Giants as they block out the sun and come inches from smashing her multiple times. And even though it's a modified trolley problem, I appreciate that the next right thing is something that comes at a great cost to Anna when she's already lost so much. Look, say what you need to say about Arendelle needing to actually pay for the sins of their past king, I will not disagree with you. But I'd also never take this moment away. The full force orchestral piece of music, this fusing of action set piece with emotional push. Listen to the way the horns scream in the moment Elsa and the knock burst out of the water. And then the notes descend along with them down the crest as they race to the front of the wave. <laughs> and part of the reason this moment hits so hard is because this note arrangement has already been established as Elsa's motif. This is literally going to be my siren call to the copyright claimers, but I just don't care. The motif is in her fight with the wind. <laughs> as well as when she finally tames the knock for the first time. And a few other times a little more subtly. Also Elsa to the rescue! I think that one might actually stop a zombie ice dragon. I guess Elsa was powerful enough after all. We must pray they are enough. Hugging. I need to ask you a question. Do you want to build a snowman? Prove it with song. I love you with all I am. Will you marry me? Kristoff's arc... <sighs> Look, he finally figured it out. Just stop talking and keep it simple. You know, you belong up here. You don't say. Yeah, this is great, but where in the world is the carrot ascot Sven bought earlier? You get this for one hour. That's okay. I prefer you in leather anyway. So Anna is short for Anastasia. Krishchov. These characters don't have last names. 
Ha! Huh. And now the main is flurrying snow. I guess after an entire video praising beautiful voices, it would be disingenuous to pretend like Brandon Urie doesn't have the voice of an angel. And Panic's addition of this triplet groove to the bridge rockifies the song I already loved. So we're, we're just we're just gonna throw all the best vocalists at this movie? Fair, Casey Musgraves is awesome. So you're gonna have to make a choice between these three, Panic at the Disco, Casey Musgraves, and Weezer? They all seem really interested and have different tones. Yes. I'm sorry, which one are you interested in? All. At this point, Weezer can make anything sound like a Weezer song, and Weezer is always a win, so yeah. Hey, so I guess no one likes this movie? That was a surprise to me. I didn't follow any of the media when it was in theaters, and my family just started watching it obsessively a few weeks ago when it came out on digital. I, uh... I like Frozen 2? I think this may happen a few times this year, but am I making this video for just myself? Maybe. I may actually like it more than the first one. Well, the first one's switcheroo subversion message about true love was one of a kind. But overall, I think I enjoyed this movie more? I laughed at Olaf more? I felt more of the emotions between Elsa and Anna, and I already said I think Into the Unknown is a better song than Let It Go. And I guess people didn't like Kristoff's song? This was all news to me. For context, I usually write my first draft, then I do some research, which often includes watching and reading other people's reviews to see if there were common things that people didn't like, to see if there was anything I should defend. But so often it was just, they didn't like it. Said there wasn't a plot or a message. I don't know. Elsa responds to a literal call to adventure and her sister wants to protect her. Both sisters learn different versions of self-reliance. The outcast learns about her true origins and gets further explanation as to why she doesn't fit in, and most importantly, self-acceptance. Eh. That's like, that's a big deal for the people Elsa represents. And like I said in the first one, right down to what seems to manifest as anxiety for her, people with any form or level of mental illness should know that they're not broken. They aren't missing a piece of themselves. And that's equally as important for the outcasts. And for a Disney movie to allow our heroine's mother to deliver that message? That's a new one. Got, got me in the feels. And, and that's to someone who could never even begin to understand the mother-daughter bond. And then the other sister who spends the movie grasping at her sister so hard and trying to stay so close because she's so afraid to lose her again, loses everything. She was being crushed under the weight of her own sorrow and implemented a beneficial technique that mental health professionals sincerely recommend. The entire song is about it. One step, then the other breaking a task down into manageable chunks. I don't know, that's a couple of words for a movie with no plot and no themes. I'm not saying it's without flaws. I mean, there's still plenty of problems with Disney in general, not least of which. When are we gonna stop pretending like these are human eye, waist, and neck proportions? I'll admit that I don't think they knew what to do with Kristoff, so he got back Bernard to failed proposal attempts. But again, it didn't bother me because these movies aren't about that relationship. It's there, it's part of Anna's story, but it's not the focus and never will be. Who or what is actually singing to Elsa is super muddled and confusing, and it doesn't really matter because it's either her mom's Marlon Brando recording, literally Atta Hallen, or maybe the spirit version of herself, the fifth spirit. But the point is the magic in her was pulling her there, so she got herself there. Otherwise, yeah, I just flat out disagree that the movie was boring or that the emotional moments had no impact. Granted, subjective opinions. I don't admit this lightly. Actually, who am I kidding? I'm the guy who says nice things about movies on YouTube.com. I got choked up like three times. I mean that there are three times throughout the movie that I just about cry every time I watch it, which has been several. I don't know, maybe it's lack of sleep, maybe it's just a craft thing. I'll admit they turned make me feel stuff into a science on this one. Elsa switched to accepting a new adventure the moment she finds out her mother is the memory of Atta Hallen and, well, I, I think we covered this one. And I just don't care that much that Arendelle should have been wiped out. She comes back to life and immediately goes to save her people's home in superhero fashion. Again, I'm a non-female, non-tween, non-daughter, and I feel empowered. I, I can't imagine what young girls in the audience feel during this. Or at least I hope they do. It's refreshing. Elsa's a persistent, magical, empathetic, selfless, fiercely protective action hero queen. The movie also begins to toy with the idea of righting past wrongs to indigenous people. It ends up a little toothless. But it's in there even if it only amounts to undoing the awful things done to you without really reconciling the imbalances that still exist. Or at least, it's not a great roadmap for the modern version of these problems. I think the thing I like best about this movie is that while Frozen was mostly Anna's movie, this one splits it more evenly, both thematically and in terms of screen time. In the first one, it would be easy to walk away feeling like Elsa was being selfish by leaving, even if she didn't know the damage she'd done. She was their queen. Kingdoms don't just thrive without a leader, and she bailed. 
You might have gotten annoyed with Elsa when she sent Anna and Olaf away, but not only was she dead nuts right in doing so, there was no way they were going along on this journey. Something that may have gone unnoticed was how crazy overprotective Anna is of Elsa. Not without reason, but at a certain point, Elsa's next right things were things that put her in danger. Things Anna would have physically tried to stop Elsa from doing. It's like a more subtextual Finding Nemo message. Anna needs to trust Elsa to know what her next right thing is, even if it's different from what Anna would choose for her or herself. I don't mean to be hard on Anna, she loves her sister and wants to protect her. She just showed a severe lack of trust in Elsa until she realized their paths were different. And that's... that's a, that's a hard lesson. Everything is hunky-dory in the end, but I don't know about you, I'm left with a twinge of sadness. Anna doesn't want anything to change, she sings a song about it while the world defies her. Having her sister die to reveal the truth and set things right put things into perspective for her, but being a nap on a carriage right away is gonna be new for Anna. I might be drawing out more than what's present or intended here, but we all grow up and move out. Well, maybe, maybe except for Olaf. How do you guys cope with the ever-increasing complexity of thought that comes with maturity? Still, it's a relevant piece of the story. I'm glad to see the movie allow it. As the first Disney Princess sequel in theaters, the filmmakers had an opportunity to get a little meta, and they did. Disney princesses typically live in a perpetual state of beauty and perfection because they've got one story and when it's over, that's where they stay. But not anymore. Now our queen becomes something new entirely, and actually we've got two queens. Change is hard, but often necessary and healthy. Elsa belongs in the forest right now, Anna belongs in Arendelle. And even with their magical paper airplanes, change has occurred and nothing will ever be the same. I don't mean to leave this on a downer. There's absolutely joy in knowing that Elsa is where she needs to be for her own self-fulfillment. And Anna can have open doors and be surrounded by most of the people she loves. I don't know. I'd watch another story in this universe. Just, uh, just come up with something meaningful for Honey Marin, would you? Next week, a movie sold as one thing that's actually another thing while being the first thing real good. Who's that guy? A Joshua. You like him? Yeah. I like him. Who's that? Hmm? I don't see you. <laughs>